the woman said, here's the drink. Let me know if you don't keep it down. Morning. Mary's got a great wake up call today because she has to do her oral glucose tolerance test, which she just drank. But it's it's fine. It's not carbonated. It's just it's like really sweet Kool Aid, but on an empty stomach. Mm. Uh. So we just did the first blood draw, and I'm pricking myself so that I can see what it is as well. They have to draw real blood for it but so they do a fasting draw so she didn't eat since midnight they draw and see what her blood sugar is and then after two hours after drinking that delicious drink they'll check her <laughs> blood sugar okay Ali and I just got back from a walk and Mary has been um, letting the amazing orange drink settle in her stomach oh my gosh but I, I always remember this about the oral glucose tolerance test that Mary told me that as a child, she, you, you liked orange soda, right? I think she's busy. <laughs> I what? I said, I think she's busy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. As a child, I loved orange soda. You loved orange soda and then you had to do the oral glucose tolerance test. Exactly. And it ruined it for you. It ruined it. To this day, I've never seen Mary drink an orange soda, I don't think. No. Yeah. It's just, wow, what is this? I don't even know. Basically, I feel like for some people, look, like having it refrigerated will be better, and for some, it will be worse. I didn't have an option, so I drank it warm. It, yeah, most people probably don't have the option of that. Yeah. And, uh, but I've been on this hospital floor before where they've done it and they do refrigerate it and they're like very conscientious about it. And they're like, yeah. I'm gonna get this in the fridge and I'm gonna get it early. And the woman said, here's the drink. Let me know if you don't keep it down. And I was like, what? That's a bad starting statement. Uh, but now I kind of get it. <laughs> But Mary was also awoken, awakened this morning by blood work, which has already come back. And we kind of knew this day would come, but we were just riding that wave of good blood numbers. But Mary's blood numbers have come down. And uh, it's been three days since we checked them last, so... Um, some of them. Some of them we were doing daily. Yeah, true. But in terms of like her blood, white blood count and and C, those have dropped. Which platelets. Platelets dropped, and but I think they're still in an okay range to finish up things tomorrow. Yeah. At least that's the plan. We still don't know. Like, there's never that perfect answer of like, should we stop at two weeks or do three weeks? If we do three weeks, is it like too much on my body or does it potentially cause more resistance or would it extend my time out of the hospital? You know, like there's all the questions. Yeah. And I think that considering my blood counts, I mean, it's obvious that it that these medications that do take a toll on my body. Mm -hmm. So if we've gotten the best bang for our buck out of two weeks of IV medications, maybe we just stop there. And we don't really know if we got the best bang for our buck. Like there's no, of course yeah. my PFTs didn't go up, but that doesn't really matter. But you yeah. know, all the things. And there's no way to, on any course to know like when the right time to stop is. I feel like I feel like it's a lot of guessing game and it's always trying to balance that, getting the most out of, out of the antibiotics and not breeding more resistance if it isn't necessary. And so it's always like this catch-22 kind of thing. But yeah, so like just for instance. For instance. Last time I was on IVs, I was on IVs for six weeks. Mm -hmm. And that was a combination of... Um, having to change IVs. Because of reactions or blood counts and then whatever. So it's 
going to look different every single time. Yep. There's no magical number. Yeah. But for this time, it's looking like two weeks is going to be yeah. a and number. We're, we're hopeful that they've definitely improved some symptoms as we can assess here in a hospital room. Um, yeah. And definitely we could say it helped with kind of the residual effects of that cold. Yes. So definitely. No, nothing's a waste. It's just like talking about ending tomorrow. We're kind of like on the edge of our seats of are we getting enough out of these antibiotics and all yeah. of that. But we've uh, the blood counts dropping kind of helps make that decision. And if we did need to continue, then we would do another Neupogen shot, which we don't know. So there's that risk of it, uh, the spleen enlarging even more. And we don't know if like one shot, it was totally fine, which we do know that. But if the second shot, it would like shoot the side, side effects, like skyrocket them or not. We have all the So unknowns. many unknowns. So we just make decisions and keep moving forward. And yeah, I think, I think the big thing is like, we just gotta make decisions and feel confident in those decisions and not throw oh. up. Oh, uh oh. Did you hear that? Is that your stomach? Stay tuned for Orange Throw Up. No, just kidding. Hopefully. I just got to the gym and I'm gonna work out. Holy moly, the camera shut off after a half hour good workout good hard they say how's that and I'm like hard and they're like good hard <laughs> yes good it was good hey look we've got clouds I haven't seen like happy clouds in a long time holy moly that was hard work how are you guys we are good I see you Waggy tail beside you. You got a waggy tail. Just taking care of work while Mary was working out. Working and working. Working and working. Hey, Oliver. Everybody loved Deep Thoughts with Oliver yesterday, so let's have another little Q&A. Okay. So, Mary, what questions do you have for Oliver? Do you have any questions? Well, one question, Ollie, is... We have never brought this bed to the hospital, and yeah. do you like that we brought it? And next time, should we bring this bed? So did, did you, you like having your bed here? Ollie, did you like having your bed here in the hospital? That was that was pretty nice. And then you don't have to sleep in the bed with, with me or Mary. I saw a tail wag. Okay, the next question is, how do you get your curls so curly? Did you get a perm? Or do you air dry instead of blow dry? Oh, tail wag means yes. Okay, next question is, do you want to go for a walk? <laughs> do you want to go outside and go better hurry? Come alert. Okay, let's go. Nah. You scared me. That was such a good prank. Good one, honey. Wow. Wow. Epic. It's almost like we've been in the hospital for two weeks. Mm -hmm. So. Are we going insane? I think so. So did, I don't know that we ever fully updated I'm... them on the status of life and your blood and your IVs. Mm. I have popcorn issues. Oh, you take care of those popcorn issues. You can tell them all about our life. I'll tell you about our life. So number one of our life is that we are going home tomorrow. It is confirmed. Um, as long as everything goes good, I mean, that that's the plan. Mary's blood counts did start to drop. They've been dropping yeah. every single day, but so, like, inchingly, yeah. that we were like, this is crazy, like amazing. Which, sometimes on IVs, it's done that, but because it's dropped immediately, like day three, when she started IVs, the gradual drop was uncharacteristic. And we and seemed like we were getting spoiled. With attributed to Neupogen. So, so we, were, we were grateful for that. So basically where we're at is, you know, we were trying to decide, should we continue IVs? Should we stop here? And then when we saw my blood numbers this morning, the whole team and us, we were all just like, 
Huh. Okay. That's confirmation. I it's guess. We'll stop. And they were at a place where we all felt comfortable continuing another day to complete the two two full weeks. Right. And so Mary's last dose will be tomorrow at 11. I think that's your last dose. I'm not exactly sure, but something like that. So well, tomorrow afternoon-ish, we'll be hopefully getting discharged from this joint. And But the something that's very encouraging to us is if respiratory-wise, say I was still, say I was still like really rumbly in my lungalies, um, or my <laughs> mucus was, or say I started coughing up blood, or like there were the big signs that my body needed more help. Yeah. We still don't know exactly how well or, it worked, but. Or if we hadn't seen any improvement. Yeah. yeah. If, yeah, or if my lung function went down or whatever. We have the option to continue. Yes, my blood numbers took a pretty steep dive today. And if we were continuing any longer, we would need to do Nupagen again. And that's okay. It's an option. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't know exactly how my body will respond the second time we do Nupagen or whatever. But they were saying, like, we would just keep an extra close eye on your spleen and yeah. all the things. And we'd just do it. But for now, we're glad to be able to finish it two weeks, and we will, uh, yeah, just keep going through tonight and to tomorrow. Uh, Mary's going to start casting to just uh, be a follow-up to IV. Um, casting is an inhaled antibiotic. I'm just coughing. I'm sorry, sorry. Just trying to breathe here. Okay. Just trying to breathe here. So that's the plan, and we're gonna hopefully stick to it. <sighs> you ready to be home? What are you looking forward to most? Sleep. Sleep. <laughs> Sleep without beeping? Yeah. I'm excited about that too. Let's go. All right. Should As we just leave always. now? Peter! Just kidding. As, As always, always, we, we will, will see you tomorrow. tomorrow. Good, Good night. night. Oh. Let's end with Ollie Boy. Come here, buddy. You want to give these people a kiss? Come over. Oh, you want to give me a kiss? Oh, thank you, buddy. Good night, guys. We'll see you tomorrow.